All right, hi everyone. Uh, welcome, and I'm here with Adam. I'm gonna have Adam introduce yourself, and if you would, introduce yourself and tell us where and what you teach. Hey everybody, my name is Adam Cronenberg. Um, I teach at the International School of Louisiana in New Orleans, and I teach eighth grade. Cool, uh, uh, for me, you cut out for a second, eighth grade. Uh, oh, social studies. Awesome, cool. Um, and I should also uh, tell everyone, this is a STEM library lab that you're uh, visiting, et cetera. So yay. All right, um, so Adam, tell us a little bit about uh, maybe what systems the school put in place for communication with students or what systems you've decided to use and how things are going. So um, we're doing suspended instruction. And um, so, so our school has given us a lot of freedom and autonomy to use uh, whatever systems we'd like to use. Almost all of a Google Classroom also, we've just continued to use that. And that's uh, something I was just using for grading, and now it's become something I use for just about everything. Um, so I've been using Google Classroom and then posting videos of my lessons, um, trying to simulate what we would be doing in the class as much as possible, um, but also realizing that it's remote learning and that's not entirely possible. Yeah, and are you finding uh, internet conductivity wise, are most kids able to tune in? Is there a way that you get uh, a hold of kids that are low internet? Conductivity? Yeah, it's a great, great question. Yeah, so um, my first assignment, 76 of 79 students did that, uh, completed it, which was amazing. And so far, response rate has been um, pretty good. I'm, my concerns are students who don't have a computer or who only have one computer, because I know um, maybe mom and dad need to use the computer, maybe other siblings need to use the computer. So we are also offering um, packets that um, to supplement for students who, who can't use a computer, don't have, have limited internet access, and they can pick them up from school. Not that many students have been doing that. We've had a couple, um, but that's, that's kind of what we've been doing. Cool. Um, and maybe tell us a little bit about the content that y'all are doing um, and where you're finding it, how it's going, how that's looking. Yeah, so but I've uh, been teaching for 10 years um, in Louisiana and five years at, the, at ISL, the school I'm currently at. And so I've already have my lessons and I'm really at that sweet spot as a teacher where I'm um, more or less just tweaking my lessons each year and specific to the groups that I have. So it's now it's just i've just been recording videos that i've been putting on youtube um using that same content that i have but just just slight changes in um, like for example there's a lot of discussions in my class and so that has been difficult to replicate but i just encourage the kid to the kids to turn and talk with a sibling or say something out loud just to try to simulate that experience cool um can you tell us a little bit about uh, Ditto? Yeah. So the Ditto Dat is the name of the, I guess, my YouTube channel. And Ditto is my dog. And he has a unique skill for catching popcorn and catching them consecutively in a row. Uh, he actually broke his record today, uh, which is really exciting. So, um, and the idea is that- What is the record? It was 31. I got it. Oh. Up there. <laughs> got it was 31. Gotcha. And it's now 45. Um, wow. Yeah. So Can we meet Ditto. Is Ditto around? He is. He's camera shy though. Okay. Um, but yeah, so the idea is I teach these lessons and then at the end of it, uh, the idea is that the kids hopefully watch the whole thing. I tell them it's not cool to fast forward to the popcorn scene, but at the end of each um, episode, they are lesson. Uh, Ditto tries to his record, and um, yeah, I tried to incorporate. I thought I was like he was my sidekick, but that turned out to be really hard to get him to sit still. <laughs> cool. Um, so I'd love to if you have resources that you've been using that you um, can shout out, or uh, and we have the screen share functionality. I'm not sure if there's anything in particular that uh, springs to mind um, that you'd be interested in sharing with other folks. I'm gonna share that in a second. I just want to just talk a little bit about my process when this all yeah, went please. down and like when we found out about this. I 
sort of took a couple of days just to like to meditate and think on it. And then um, I talked to a real good friend of mine who's an educator, Jake Stein Greenberg up in New Jersey. Um, I'll put you in contact with him because I think he'd be a really good resource. And then I listened to this podcast, um, which I'll show in a second. But it, what I learned, my takeaway from it was, was the guy was talking about remote learning in rural parts of, I think it was Canada or I forgot exactly where. But he just pointed out that teachers have been doing this for a long time, that we've been doing remote learning in various forms for 15, 20 plus years. And just knowing that and knowing that um, these things are already out there, that there's resources already out there, was put me at ease a lot. And um, you know the old teacher saying, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. And um, so that was really helpful for me. But yeah, let me share my screen. Cool. Yep. Like you can see, okay, yeah. So this is it, yes. Visions of Education. It's really up, the um, episode is the second to last one, this one right here. And the interview in particular. Uh, uh, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's this one right here. It's episode 138 Coronavirus and Teaching Online. That was cool. super. Super, especially the guy they were interviewing. Um, cool. And we will um, both share the link and then uh, we'll link to this on our website as well. So if you're watching from home, you can um, you can visit stemlibrarylab.org and find it. And then we'll also share the links directly through this at the end of the video. And I've been using Screencastify um, for the recording. And that's what I use. And you can record that and then upload it um, as a YouTube video. And it even has a link where you can connect it to your Google Classroom. Um, and that's been super helpful um, as well. Cool. Um, great. And if teachers are interested and want to learn more, is there a way they can get in touch with you? Yeah. So first of all, you got to you got to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Can do. <laughs> um, it's ditto da, ditto dat Mr. Cronenberg's. There it is. Ditto. You can see it to the yeah. right of me. Yeah. Ditto dat Mr. Cronenberg's remote classroom. Um, and then you can also reach me at um, my school email, which is kind of complicated, a Cronenberg at isl-edu.org. Yeah, we'll link it in writing as well so that people can. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Those are the best ways. Yeah, send me an email. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. Awesome. Thank you so much for chatting with us. Yeah, thanks for having me.